How old is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the day of migration? How old is he? 23 years old? Is he walking from Mecca to Medina on foot? Or on this journey with the thousands of people trying to find him down and kill him when he's like 35 years old? The age of some actor or something, some strong marathon runner? How old is he at this age? 53! He's 53 years old! Show me a 53 year old man in Milwaukee, Wisconsin who can walk two miles in the heat of Makkah Mukarramah without collapsing. And our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has so much pressure on him. And his companion for migration, how old is he? 23. How old is he? 25. How old is he? He's 51. How old is his companion? Abu Bakr's 51. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is 53. You know, if we saw someone that age, we'd say, they're both goners. 53 year old guy and the guy's bodyguard is 51. Forget it, right? But here Abu Bakr as-Siddiq says, O Messenger of Allah, we can't outrun these people. We have to play smart. What we need to do is we need to hide in one of these caves. The Prophet says, okay, let's do it. He says, O Messenger of Allah, but there's an issue. The issue is that wherever we go, they're going to catch us. Because they will see two sets of footsteps. And they know there's two of us. He said, O Messenger of Allah, we have to remove one set of the footsteps. Now you and I would think that someone's going to get a bullet in their head. Right? We have to remove one set of the, of the footsteps. He says, O Messenger of Allah, we have to remove one set of the footsteps. The Prophet says, Abu Bakr, what are you suggesting? He said, O Messenger of Allah, grab my back and let me carry you up the mountain. What is he saying? Grab my back. I'm going to carry you up the mountain. And this is not a walk in the park. This is a steep mountain. Ghar al he says, O Messenger of Allah, get on my back, I will carry you up. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he holds on to Abu Bakr Siddiq Radiallahu An. And Abu Bakr Siddiq Radiallahu An, this weak man, he's doing dua to Allah and he's climbing his way up Mount Everest. He's climbing his way up Thawr. And he's going towards that cave. And let me, let me tell you one thing. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wasn't only, he didn't, his mass wasn't only composed of his flesh and blood. His bones. His mass was composed of prophethood. It was composed of wahi. You know when they conquered Makkah Mukarramah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he entered into, into the Kaaba and he took his staff and he was breaking all the idols in the Kaaba. There was one idol that was at a lofty high place in the Kaaba. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam couldn't reach it. Ali Radiallahu Anh was there. He said, O Messenger of Allah, jump on my shoulder. Let me get you to the top, of, to the top so you can break that idol. Now Ali Radiallahu Anh on the other side was a stocky guy. He was a heavyweight. This guy can knock anyone out. He was a strong guy. He went to the fortress of Khaybar. He grabbed the, 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 the door handle and he yanked it out of his hinges. Try that when you're at home, right? Actually, don't try it. <laughs> Your father's going to say, where did that sheikh come from, right? <laughs> Imagine that. Not some fire door or some door that you have here. A fortress. You know how thick those doors are? They're made of real wood, not compressed wood, okay? He gets, he grabs a hold of the handle and he yanks it out of its hinges. And these hinges are like one millimeter or one centimeter hinges. These are like God knows how many feet wide, right? He yanks it out of its hinges. And then he says, the people, the, 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 the Yahud, they came out of that fortress. And as they came, Ali radiallahu anh told his companions, stand behind me. And he rushed them with that, with that door. He held the door in front of him and he ran forward and he knocked them all off their feet. This guy was solid, he was strong. And he says to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa oh Messenger of Allah, Climb on my shoulder so you can reach that idol there. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does he say to him? He says, Inna ka la tastati'u hamla thiql al nabuwa That Ali, your shoulders cannot bear the weight of nabuwa. What does he say to him? Ali, your shoulders, Inna ka la tastati'u hamla thiql al nabuwa You cannot bear the weight of nabuwa, the weight of Prophet on your shoulders. And here Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu is holding on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People are chasing him. Every street, every corner, every mountain, every pathway is being searched, right? And Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh is climbing up. He's climbing up. He's climbing up. And finally, when he reaches a cave where he thinks is a good place for him, for them to stay, he tells the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Messenger of Allah, you wait outside. Let me go inside." He goes inside the cave. He enters into the cave, and he takes the scarf from his head and he cleans the cave out. He removes anything in that cave that would possibly hurt the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He then uses that cloth and tears it into pieces and covers all the different mouths and all the different holes inside the cave in case anything crawls inside to hurt the Prophet And now when this lounge has been prepared for the Prophet 
He says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, please enter inside the cave. And when they sit down in the cave, they see that they are, the mouth of the cave is uncovered. And the Prophet ﷺ tells Abu Bakr, don't worry. And the ankabut come, the spider comes, and it spins its web on the mouth of the cave. They're sitting inside there. One hole is left uncovered. Abu Bakr Siddiq one has no cloth spare to put inside that hole. He puts his foot against that hole. He sits down. He says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you must be tired. Why don't you go to sleep in my lap? What is he saying? Who's tired? Oh Messenger of Allah, you might be tired. So why don't you go? Who's been carrying who on the back? Abu Bakr has been carrying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the back and he says, Oh Messenger of Allah, you must be tired. Why don't you go to sleep in my lap? And he takes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he lies him down and he puts the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to sleep. And how blessed Abu Bakr must be. Spending three days, three days and three nights in seclusion alone with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One on one time. You know, you get excited when you get to have lunch with the sheikh, when you get to drive the sheikh from one community to another community, when you get to go to the sheikh's house and have tea with him. He spent one on one time, not with the sheikh, with Sheikh al Mashaikh, Sayyid al Anbiya wal Mursaleen, Khairul Khalqillahi Kullihimi. He's spending personal time with the Prophet. And Nabi is in his lap. And the story is very famous. He's covering his foot on that hole. The snake comes and bites his foot. And he feels the poison is spreading through his body. And as he feels that poison is spreading through his body, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, he can't bear the pain. But he doesn't want to move. The reason why he won't move is because if he moves, the Prophet wasallam sleep will be destroyed. It will be disturbed. So he signs a death warrant. He signs his death certificate. He can feel poison in his body. He now has an option, either I stand up, or either I give my life and I die and let this poison spread in my body because I don't want the Prophet ﷺ to wake up. And what choice does he make? I'm gonna stay exactly where I am. If I need to die, I'll die. But I won't disturb the Prophet ﷺ in his sleep. And then the tear from his face falls on the beloved face of Nabi ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ wakes up, he says, Abu Bakr, what's wrong? Why are you crying? He said, a Messenger of Allah, something just bit me in my foot and I could feel the poison spreading through my body. The Prophet says, Abu Bakr, show me your foot. And the Prophet takes his blessed saliva, he places it on the foot of Abu Bakr Siddiq. Abu Bakr Siddiq says, My other foot used to hurt sometimes, but this foot was made of iron now. That foot sometimes used to hurt a little. But this foot, it never shook, it was just solid and rock. It was just the most powerful thing, powerful limb that I had in my body. That limb which touched the saliva of Nabi.